All right, guys, so welcome to the fifth installment of the Flip Classroom. Uh, today we're going to talk about Unit 5.5, Graphs of Relations and Functions. So we're going to be looking at, uh, we're going to be looking at graphs of certain functions. We're also going to be able to identify the values of the domains and the ranges of those functions. Okay, so here it's asking us to represent the function that associates every whole number with its double. So we're associating every, whole, associating every whole number, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to infinity, with its double. And that's represented by the function y is equal to 2x. So for any number that I plug in for x, so for any whole number that I put in for x, the y is going to end up being its double. And that makes sense because this function is essentially multiplying any x by 2. So they're asking us to use a table of values to list the domain and the range. So on the left, remember we always put our domain on the left when we're doing a table of values, and on the right is going to be our range. Now you'll get used to this, uh, but you should remember this from last year, but x is nearly always the domain, and y here is nearly always the range. So they're saying for every whole number, well, if x is any whole number, I can just pick a whole bunch of whole numbers. And we'll start with one because that's easy and we'll go two, three, four, five. I could have chosen any other set of whole numbers but uh, we're just going to make this easy by sticking with one to five. So in the case of the numbers one to five we need to figure out what the range is. So uh, well, when x is one y is going to be two. And that kind of makes sense because if I plug in one for x, uh, two times one is two. So that's two. And then the double of 2 is 4, the double of 3 is 6, the double of 4 is 8, and the double of 5 is 10. So here's our table of values for the domain 1 to 5. Now the table continues for all whole numbers. And that makes sense. This table is just a snapshot of what this function represents. Because this function represents every whole number. That's a lot of numbers. So they're asking us what the domain is and what the range is in full. Well, we can we can tell them what the domain is because they've told us. It's every whole number. Every whole number that exists. So what's the range then? Well, if we look at what, what happened here in the range, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Now if you take any number, any whole number, and multiply it by 2, you will always, always get an even number. So, the range then is going to be every even number. And that's it. The domain can be represented by any whole number that exists, whereas the range is limited to every even number. It cannot be an odd number. So now that we've done a table of values, let's graph it. So, x is the domain. You should know by now that the domain always goes on the bottom or the horizontal axis and the range is always going to go on the vertical axis. So now we have to create our scale. Well the domain has to go from 1 to 5. Here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 numbers. So how about I skip every line. So every second line will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then here I have a range 2 to 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we'll say 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Perfect. And then we'll title our graph. We'll title this y is equal to 2x. All right, here we go. Let's plot our points. Uh, so for the domain, x is equal to 1 when y is equal to 2. So x is 1 when y is 2, right there. Uh, domain 2, range 4. So domain 2, range 4. Uh, continuing like that, 3 is going to be 6. 4 is going to be 8, and 5 is going to be 10. Perfect. All right. Now, is this a continuous graph, or is this a discrete graph? Well, to find out, we're going to draw a point in between of our data points. So. Let's draw a point really anywhere. Let's draw a point right here. So if we look at this, this would represent 
an x value or a domain of two and a half and a y value of five. Now it is true that five is double 2.5, but there's an issue here because they've stipulated that the domain is every whole number. And since 2.5 is not a whole number, we cannot draw data points between the points that we've already drawn. Therefore, this would be a discrete graph, not continuous. So we would not draw a line connecting these dots. All right, and we've already talked about the domain. The domain of a function is uh, the independent variable. So we'll say the independent variable. And in this case, is the x values. And the range of a function is the dependent variable. Or in this case, the y values. Okay. So here's two different cases. We're going to have to determine whether uh, each of these graphs is a function or not. And if we go back to this graph here, uh, we can ask ourselves whether this is a function or not. And if we look at this, it's clearly a function because uh, every domain is only associated with one element in the range. And that manifests itself on the graph by never having more than one point aligned along the vertical axis. So uh, let's look here. Now here's a really good visual example of something that's not a function. This is not a function because we have an x value of 1 represented here, because this is 2 and 4, so we can assume that this is 1. When the domain is 1, and x along the horizontal axis is always the domain, when the domain is 1, check this out, we have 1, 2, and 3 points associated with this domain. We have a y value of 3, 4, and 5. So if I were to draw this on a table, I would have to draw if I had x and y, this would look like 1 for the x is associated with 3, but 1 is also associated with 4, and 1 is also associated with 5, meaning that this example here is not a function, because we definitely have an element in the domain that's associated more than an element in the range. So a relation is not a function. It is not a function has two or more ordered pairs with the same first coordinate. So when the ordered pairs of the relation are plotted on a grid, a vertical line can be drawn to pass through more than one point. Now in this case, if we look at this coordinate here, we cannot have, there is no vertical line rather that has more than one point as we did here. And that's saying that each element of the domain is only associated with one element in the range and therefore this is a function. So a function has ordered pairs with different first coordinates. So when the ordered pairs of the function are plotted on a grid, any vertical line drawn will always pass through no more than one point. Good. Moving. Uh, so here's our first example. Uh, which of these graphs represents a function? And justify your answer. Well, we're really just looking at vertical lines here or vertical axes. So I take my ruler, go across, boom. Here's a domain that's associated with two elements in the range. And here's an element of the domain that's associated with three elements in the range. So this is definitely not a function. Uh, and then here we have one overall population. And if I go along with my ruler, there is no point within the vertical axes where there are multiple points. Therefore, each element of the domain is associated with only one element in the range. And so this is a function.
All right, so try this yourself. Uh, pause the video here, take a minute, uh, just do this quickly, and then come back and we'll go through the answer. All right, so uh, you should be able to tell just by looking, but clearly this is a function because there are no two points on the same vertical axis, and this is not a function because there's points here, 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 and here, and here that are aligned on the same vertical axis. Okay, uh, so now we're going to talk about number lines. So a lot of what we've done up to this point has kind of been a review, and uh, now we're going to do something completely different. So here's what we talked about when we're talking about a number line. Uh, this is what uh, is traditionally thought of when we talk about number lines, starting at zero. Uh, and here are some examples of what is meant by an interval on a number line. So if we take this example here, we have an arrow drawn here. Now, on this side, we have a point. And on this side, we have the arrow. And what that means is, this visual representation represents all numbers greater than or equal to negative one. So, Let's just say we're talking about a variable, and let's call that variable x. This line is telling us that x has the values negative 1 and all numbers greater than negative 1 to infinity. But it doesn't include any numbers less than negative 1. And we can represent that. We can represent that in a written form. And it looks like this. I'm going to use the symbol uh, less than and greater than. If you guys remember, we have uh, the two symbols here. So this would represent, uh, an example would be 1 is less than 2. And remember that you can think of this as a crocodile, and the crocodile is always eating the bigger number. So in this case, this would be, 1 is less than 2, uh, and here I could say 3 is greater than 4. Now you might have also come across the symbol less than or equal to, but in this case it doesn't work because 3 is definitely not less greater than or equal to 4. But it does work in the example below. So here we have, we'll call this x, x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So we have negative 1 is less than or equal to x. So that's saying x can be any value greater than or equal to negative 1. All right, let's look at our second one here. So the second one's saying, all right, so we have 2 is where the point is. So that's saying that there is no value greater than 2, but then we have all the values that are less than 2 because we have our arrow here. So that's saying that we have all the values less than 2 all the way to what we could call negative infinity, I guess. So to represent this uh, numerically, we say that x is less than or equal to 2 because we'll call this we'll call this a representation of x all right so this one we'll say that this is x as well a different x uh, now we don't have any arrows here here we have two points and what this means is we have we have a small interval here whereas this says that it goes on forever and ever and ever this is saying that it stops right here and this stops right here. So in this case, x is equal to 0 or greater than 0. So it's, it's greater than or equal to 0, but it's less than or equal to 4. So x is an interval shown to be all numbers between 0 and 4. And we can represent that by saying 0 is less than or equal to x and x is less than or equal to 4. Another way of saying this would be x 
is greater than or equal to zero, but x is less than or equal to 